from Pittsburgh's People's Media. Midnight Radio, WBRC. Live from Zoom Room B on the World Wide Web, you're listening to Bricolage's Midnight Radio. A remote education program connecting school curriculum with the creation of 1940-style radio plays. Whatever you're learning in school today, it's Midnight Radio. Students transform into radio plays. It's Midnight Radio. Performing sounds are what characters say. It's Midnight Radio. Bricolage is proud to present Midnight Radio. Hello, Detective Samuels. I'm so glad you could make it down to the station. I know what a difficult time this must be for you. Yes, Detective. We laid poor Spence at arrest just this morning. The children are inconsolable. I imagine they must be. Please have a seat. Can I get you anything, Miss Murphy? A glass of water? Perhaps some tea? Some tea would be lovely. Certainly. Just let me put the kettle on the fire, then we'll all be ready in a moment. I hope this won't take too long, Detective. I'm rather anxious to get back to the children. I understand, Miss Murphy, and I promise I will make this as quick as possible. There are just so many unknowns surrounding your husband's tragic death, and you can imagine how many questions I have. Of course, Detective. Is it true you met Spencer while you were an employee in his textile mill? Indeed it is. I caught his eye after my first week on the job. I had worked at the mills all my life, you see. I was raised in the streets. Detective, my entire childhood was spent in extreme poverty. Nothing like the life I lead now. I expected to work long hours at the Murphy Textile Mill for the rest of my life, always struggling to make a living. But then one fateful afternoon, Spencer saw me working in the factory floor and... Oh, pardon me, Miss Murphy. Let me go prepare our tea. Please keep talking. I'll never forget that day. I hardly knew who Spencer even was. Of course, he was just Mr. Murphy to me at the time. Miss? Yes, sir? What is your name? Why, it's Jenny, sir. Jenny Albright. And do you like working at my factory, Jenny Albright? Your factory? You mean your... Mr. Spencer Murphy? Yes. I'm the owner of this factory, which also makes me your boss, doesn't it, Miss Albright? Um, am I in trouble, Mr. Murphy? In trouble? Heavens no. But as your boss, I do have a task I would like you to complete as soon as possible. What is it, Mr. Murphy? I want you to gather your things and clock out. Then I want you to join me in my office on the top floor of the factory. There you will be my honored guest for lunch. Are you serious, Mr. Murphy? Quite serious, Miss Albright. Now get to it. Why, why, come over here and escort Miss Albright to my office for lunch, will you? And make sure her shift is covered for the rest of the afternoon. Yes, sir. I'll see you for lunch, Miss Albright. <laughs> Yes, he's Spencer's foreman. He was the one who found Spencer's body, was he not? Yes, he was. Mr. Paul helped Spencer open the factory. They used to be great friends, well, until the incident. What incident is that? I'm afraid that's not my story to tell, Detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to my family. I'm sure you'll understand. Yes, of course, Miss Murphy. And please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any other information about your husband's death. Certainly, Detective. I wonder what incident Miss Murphy was referring to. 
It couldn't have any bearing on what happened to Ms. Mur Mr. Murphy. Why Paul was the person who found Mr. Murphy's body after all, and that already places quite a burden of suspicion on him. Detective Samuels? Yes. I'm Wyatt Paul. Oh, yes. How do you do? Oh, I, uh... My apologies, Detective. But as you can see, I'm quite unable to return your right-hand handshake. Perhaps we can shake with the left instead. Yes, of course. I'm so sorry. I had no idea that. Uh, that I'm missing my right arm? Well, it's not my favorite topic of discussion, but it's quite difficult to ignore, especially when handshakes are in order. Please, have a seat, Mr. Paul. Tea? Please. I suppose you know why I asked you here today, Mr. Paul. Mr. Murphy's murder? Murder? What happened to Spencer was no accident, Detective. He never would have put himself in harm's way with those machines. That was everyone else's job. What do you mean? Let me tell you a little story about my first week at the job at the Murphy Textile Factory. I was Spencer's right-hand man in those days, back when I still had a right hand. Quiet! What's going on with the machines? Why has production slowed on this line? Some of the spindles need adjusted, Spencer. Well, then adjust them. I need to shut down the entire machine to adjust them safely. What? Nonsense. You can adjust the spindle just as easily with the machine running. But Spencer is very dangerous. It will only take you a minute. Why? And if you won't do it, I'll find myself a foreman who will. Yes, sir. My sleeve! Spencer, my sleeve is caught! Perhaps I should have died that day, but the other workers were able to pull me out before I was hurt any worse. I never should have been forced to adjust the spindles while the machine was running. But I suppose the machines got the best of Spencer in the end. How exactly did you find him, Mr. Paul? I was doing my morning rounds examining the machinery when I approached the drawing frames. It seemed Spencer's shirt had gone caught in the, by the shaft, which would have drawn him in with incredible force, dashing him to the floor below. It whirled him around repeatedly, snapping all his bones in short order, winding him tighter and tighter around the mechanisms with each turn. The strain of his body with the machine eventually stopped by the main shaft, and sometimes after that, I found him. I wouldn't have recognized him if it hadn't been for his pocket watch, which is dangling by his mutilated body, still ticking. That is utterly horrific, Mr. Paul, but it still sounds like an accident to me. You said yourself that Mr. Murphy's shirt had become entangled in the machine, just like your sleeve had. Yes, Detective. His shirt had gone caught on the machine, but it was the back of the shirt, not the front. Spencer wasn't leaning over the machine trying to repair it or get any closer look. He was pushed backwards. And now, we interrupt this program with a message from our sponsors. Are you ready for the haunted style this side of the assembly line? Then finish that 13 shower shift at the mill and head down to Murphy's Textiles, where fashion meets factory meets function. You'll create your own personal industrial revolution of our full length, high waisted cotton day dress with modern neck lines and matching aprons. And gentlemen, we didn't forget about you. Dazzle your friends and neighbors with our signature linen pullover shirts with scratchy wool trousers, available exclusively at... We've got a rich selection of colors to choose from, using dyes made from flowers, roots, tree bark, nuts, berries, fruits, mosses, lichens, fungi, and even insects and shellfish. So come to Murphy's Textiles if you're serious about faction. After all, the factory is where you go to work. Murphy's Textiles is where you go to work. Murphy's now, back to our regularly scheduled program, already in process. Now you're telling me that you believe 
someone pushed Mr. Murphy into the machinery. And that's how he met his, and that's how he met his grisly end. That's exactly what I'm telling you. But who would want to do that? That's what everyone wants to know, Detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I better get, get back to the factory. Of course, Mr. Paul. Thank you for your time. Well, hello there. I was just about to knock on your door, Detective. Johnny Calico, what are you doing here? I have an interview with Detective Samuels. I'm guessing you did as well. None of your business. Now make this quick. I need you to back at work as soon as possible. I'll try to make this quick, Mr. Calico. I don't want you to get in trouble at work. Oh, don't mind him. He's always in a rotten mood. Why is that? He never got over losing that arm. But why? That happened years ago. I guess you'd have to ask him. But more to the point, Detective. What is it you want to ask me? I'm trying to piece together some motives for why someone might want to hurt Mr. Murphy. And I, and I know you two are quite close. I'm close to the whole Murphy family, Detective. I've been Spencer's friend since we were scrappy little boys running around the streets like a couple of alley cats. Back before he became a richy rich big shot. I've known Jenny since her first day at the factory. I took her under my wing and showed her the ropes. It was pretty clear she wasn't going to last too long under the strain of factory work. I suppose it's a good thing, then, that she married Mr. Murphy when she did. <laughs> Shows how much you know. Spencer wasn't the one she should have married, detective. She should have married me. Marry him? You can't be serious. Of course I am, Johnny. Why wouldn't I be? Because it's all wrong for you, Jenny. Believe me, I've known it my whole life. Oh, you haven't known me all of mine. I've struggled to survive for years, Johnny. If I marry Spencer, I'll never have to worry about money or food or shelter ever again. But will you be happy? Can you be happy with him? What's happiness if you don't know where your next meal is coming from? What's happiness if you work in a factory breaking your back 14 hours a day, six days a week? What's happiness when you have to send off your own children to the same dirty textile mill? He doesn't know you like I know you, Jenny. He doesn't see what I see. What do you mean? Oh, I love you, Jenny. I don't know. I, I know I don't have Spencer's money or social standing, but I make an honest living and I'll always do right by you. Give me a chance. Oh, Johnny, no, I'm sorry, but no, I've made up my mind. This will be my last shift at the factory. I'm leaving this lifestyle for good. She chose Mr. Murphy over you. Yes, detective, she did. Tied herself to that guy for the rest of her life. Or at least she thought she did. I guess I still have a chance after all, don't I? What do you mean? Eh, nothing. Look, detective, I gotta get back to work. I'll let you know if I hear any new information, all right? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Calico. Who murdered Sp Spencer Murphy? Was it his devoted wife, his hardworking foreman, his childhood friend? Now you, the audience, can vote on who the murderer is and see the conclusion of our story after the votes are tallied. That's right. I killed Spencer. You try being married to such a dull, boorish man like that. Everything about him was work, work, work. We never traveled, we never went to theater, we never enjoyed any of the money he made off the backs of all those poor workers in his factory. So why shouldn't I enjoy life without him? I certainly wouldn't end up with his fortune if I left him. Not to mention the scandal I would endure. But an inconsolable widow with fatherless children. I'd inherit every penny. But how, you wonder, can a meek creature like me pull off such a gruesome murder? Well, I might not live on the streets anymore, but I haven't forgotten how to survive in a dog-eats-dog -dog world. I hadn't worked in that factory for over 10 years, but I still remember each and every detail of those awful machines. I went to the factory late one night when Spencer was working. I shut off the framing device, and when Spencer came to investigate, I switched it back on and pushed it backwards! It was the last thing he saw before the machine took him. And now, I'll take
take his fortune! I would say you're right to sue my murder, Spencer, but there's nothing right about my life, especially not my arm. When Spencer's negligence caused the accident, it took so much more away from me than my arm. It took my entire future. I'd only been working factories to support myself while I established myself as a professional pianist. I worked for years practicing the piano. I spent my entire childhood glued to the keyboard. I was determined to spend my life playing for crowded concert halls, earning standing innovations every night. My factory job helped to pay my living expenses, and the job at Spencer's Foreman was going to provide me a salary large enough that I could afford my very own grand piano. But before I could buy it, my dreams were quite literally cut short. Spencer never cared about ruining my music career. My only value to him was his, my, his foreman, and there I would be destined to stay forever working in a factory day after day, having to look at Spencer's smug face year after year, knowing that what he took for me. I couldn't stand it any longer. Finally, late one night, as we were making rounds on the factory sport, Spencer paused in front of the framing machine. Before I could give it a second thought, my instincts switched over. I pushed him backwards and ended his life the same way he ended mine. It's a funny thing about childhood friends. The same person you'd lay your life down for as a little kid can become your sworn enemy just a few years later. I thought me and Spencer would be lifelong pals, but I guess I should have known when he inherited his uncle's fortune and bought that factory. Soon, my street smart buddy became a stuck up baron of industry, just like the rest of those selfish jerks. He still had a heart, all right. He was kind enough to me and hires one of his underpaid, overworked employees working 14-hour shifts in his textile mill. But just when I got a taste of real happiness, he was right there to yank it out from under me. I was the one who knew Jenny first. I was the one who fell in love with her first. But did that matter? No way! Spencer and his money were the only thing that mattered, so off Jenny went in his arms while I was left alone and heartbroken. It took me a while to work up the nerve to kill him, but with all these machines around to do the work for me, all it took was a little push. With Spencer out of the picture, I can swoop in and be the husband and father Jenny and her family need, and I won't mind spending all of that money either. You hear that, Spencer? Thanks to the wife and fortune, old pal. It was worth the wait.